Greetings, it's Professor S, and I'm here for the next five or so minutes to talk to you about the modern understanding of the structure of the plasma membrane. That is the fluid mosaic interpretation of membrane structure. Now to begin with, the most abundant molecule found in the plasma membrane is this guy. This is a phospholipid. Let's change it from that ball and stick model into its standard cartoon version. Now, as you can see here, this is a molecule that is an amphipathic lipid. It's got a hydrophilic head region and a hydrophobic tail region. And the consequence of having hydrophilic side and hydrophobic side to this fairly large molecule is, well, it's what happens when you put it into an aqueous environment. You put this thing into an aqueous environment, what do the heads do? They hydrogen bond with water. What do the tails not do? Hydrogen bond with water. And so the tails end up getting pushed together, the heads pointing to the outside while I'm showing it in two dimensions to my right, this is actually a three-dimensional sphere that forms called a micelle. This is a spontaneous result of putting this amphipathic molecule into an aqueous environment. But if you put enough of them in there, they begin to interact with each other in a way where the weak and transient hydrogen bonds that individually aren't that strong, uh, they start to overwhelm things if you get enough of them, and instead of being held together as a ball, it starts to flatten out, and we get a membrane. A membrane, like this thing. It's our phospholipid bilayer, the basic structure of the plasma membrane. It's called a phospholipid bilayer because it's made of phospholipids, and when you break that other word down, bi means two, and layer means layer. It's two layers of phospholipid molecules with the heads either pointing out away from the cell on the side where I'm standing or into the cytosol side of the cell down there. Either way, they're forming hydrogen bonds with water in those two environments to stabilize the basic structure. Uh, at this same time, individual hydrogen bonds, as I mentioned, are weak and transient, so we can't hold any one phospholipid in a fixed position. They move around. Hence, the membrane behaves like a fluid. It's not a solid. The membrane has parts that are constantly moving. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of a few phospholipid heads just so you can see. Track those heads. Those phospholipids can move around within the membrane. So it's a barrier between the cell's interior and the external environment, but it's a fluid barrier. Now, it's not just about the fluid barrier. There's other molecules involved as well. Here we have cholesterol. It's a steroid. Um, you can see the four ring structure, classic steroid. Let's again make it a cartoon and then compare it to a phospholipid. It's a good size molecule, uh, but it's smaller than a phospholipid. And the key here is it's got a single hydroxyl group, that red ball, and then the rest of it's all carbon and hydrogen. This really hydrophobic steroid is going to be put into the cell membrane and it's going to make the inside even more hydrophobic. Like so, you have a whole bunch of steroids, cholesterol molecules embedded in the membrane. The hydroxyl group points outward with the hydrophilic heads of the phospholipids, but the rest makes the inside even more hydrophobic, which further stabilizes the membrane. This is really important in animal cells. Uh, a lot of other organisms don't necessarily have cholesterol or other steroids in their membrane, so those cells have cell walls to stabilize from the exterior. But it's not just steroids embedded in this uh, membrane. There's some other things there as well. Things like these two integral membrane proteins, proteins that pass from one side of the membrane all the way through to the other. We have here a pair of peripheral membrane proteins, proteins that essentially float on one side of the membrane. Now I'm showing them both on the interior of the cell's membrane, but they could actually be on the exterior as well. I have here to my right a glycolipid, to my left a glycoprotein. These are other complex organic molecules that are in the cell membrane, and when we put all of these things in together, we get something like this. Reasonably realistic representation of a cartoon membrane drawn in two dimensions. You see the phospholipid bilayer, which behaves as a fluid, and embedded in that are a whole host of other organic molecules. They're embedded piecemeal, they're not contiguous with the entire membrane, they're in a mosaic fashion, like pieces of tiles in a mosaic picture, they're molecules embedded in it. Hence, the modern take on the fluid mosaic model that is the plasma membrane.
let's go ahead and do another take. What are you wearing? Is that a GoPro? Yeah, it's a GoPro. What's your issue? Why are you wearing a GoPro? Well, come on. I, I thought it would be good for market research to, you know, know what the people who are watching these videos are doing while they're watching. And so I just figured if I'm shooting the video and wearing the GoPro, we'll be able to see what they're doing. That's not how the technology works, you idiot. You sure? Yes, just do the take. Hey, this is Professor S. If you enjoyed that video, found it helpful, here's a couple others that you may also enjoy. And don't forget to hit the button to subscribe. And I guess we'll never know what you're thinking since he says the GoPro won't work that way.